Hello, welcome to Christchurch Daily Prayer. We're going to uh, jump right in with the Advent Night Prayer liturgy. For the Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who, who made, made heaven, heaven and, and earth. earth. And let's spend a moment in silence to reflect on the day that has just passed. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Alleluia. And we're now going to be reading our psalm of the day. And uh, today we are reading Psalm 50. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising to the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes, he does not keep silence before him as a devouring fire. Around him, a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually poured before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the fields is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and perform your vows to the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to recite my statutes or take my covenant on your lips? For you hate discipline and you cast my words behind you. If you see a thief, you are pleased with him and you keep company with the daughters. You give your mouth free rein for evil and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done and I have been silent. You thought that I was one like yourself. But now I rebuke you and lay the charges before you. Mark this then, you who forget God, lest I tear you apart and there be none to deliver. To the one who offers thanksgiving as a sacrifice glorifies me. To one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. Amen. And let's pause for reflection before we hear from um, the daily reading from the One True Light book. Chapter 15, The Glory of God. We have seen his glory. John 1, verse 14. I recently witnessed a partial eclipse of the sun. Every piece of coverage on the news warned us not to look directly at the sun. I wondered about making a pinhole viewer out of an old box. But in the, in the event that there was thin cloud, thin enough for the sun to be seen, but thick enough to enable us to look at the eclipse safely, what, did, what I did not do is ignore the warnings. If you look directly at the sun as it shines, it will damage your eyes. In verse 14, John mentions a word we often say in Christian circles, but about which we rarely stop to think what we mean. Glory. Literally, glory means weight, the heaviness of something, the nature of it. God's glory is God's goodness, and looking at the glory of God can damage more than your eyes. God's glory comes with a health warning. We've seen how God made flesh tabernacled among us in the person of his son. We've seen that this was an echo and fulfilment of the tabernacle in the wilderness. This is what happened when the first tabernacle was erected. The cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. 
Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it. The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle, Exodus 40, verse 34 and 5. The presence of God means the glory of God. The glory of God descended on the tabernacle and Moses was forced to evacuate. Twice the text says the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. This has happened again and fully in Jesus. We have seen his glory. God has pitched his tabernacle among us in the person of Jesus and God has filled his tabernacle with his glory. We see the glory of God in the person of his son. In Exodus 33 verse 18, Moses says to God, now show me your glory. It's a bold request and God responds graciously and generously. But there's a problem. God will reveal his glory in his name. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Verse 20. So Moses can only be near God's glory, but cannot see it. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. On Mount Sinai, God will pass by and Moses will see the afterglow of his glory. Hundreds of years later, another prophet is on Mount Sinai, or Mount Horeb as it is also known. Elijah is, a weary, and, is weary and disillusioned, so God says to him, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. That's 1 Kings 19 verse 11. Again, God passes by. He passes by to reveal his glory. Hundreds of years later, the disciples are straining at the oars of their boat. The wind is against them and they're getting nowhere. Jesus is praying on a mountain. But when he sees them straining, he goes out to them, walking on the water across the lake. Mark tells us that he was about to pass by them. Mark 6. At first sight, that seems a really odd thing to do. Jesus sees his friends in trouble, goes out to them and then seems to ignore them. Has he lost interest? We need to read this story alongside the stories of Moses and Elijah. In those stories, God passed by to reveal his glory. And now God in Jesus again passes by to reveal his glory. But here's the difference. Jesus isn't on the mountain. He's left the mountain to go out to the disciples and then he climbs into the boat. The God of glory is in the boat with his friends, with us, in the place where we are straining. God is with us to reveal his glory we're all in the same boat. We sometimes say to one another, in other words, we face the same problem. Jesus says to us, we're in the same boat. The problem you face, you don't face alone. Jesus is with you. We have seen his glory, says John. I think you can detect the wonder he feels at this decades later. God had told Moses, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. John has looked into the face of Jesus and has seen the glory of God. And he's lived to tell the tale. To meditate on, we have seen his glory. O come Adonai, Lord of might, who to those, tri those tribes on Sinai's height in ancient times did give the law in cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. And we pray, Lord Jesus, come to me now in your goodness, Come to spread your treasures, to enrich my heart with all grace and strength, to bear all afflictions, to encounter all dangers, to bring peace of conscience and joy in the Holy Spirit. Come to make my heart, as it were, a heaven. Empty your goodness into my soul. Amen. Even to your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your, your hands, hands, O Lord, Lord I, commend I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend, I commend my, my spirit. spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your, your hands, hands, O Lord, Lord I, commend I commend my spirit. Let's pray together again. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Let your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now for the conclusion. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For, for you, you alone, Lord, Lord make us dwell in safety. safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For, for the, the night, night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so, so do we, we look, look for you, O Christ. Come with the dawning of the day and, and make, make yourself, yourself known in the breaking of the, of the bread. bread. And the Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord is kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. Amen.